Good morning, McLaren. Happy Founders Day. Today, I'd like to talk about signs like this sign or this one or even maybe this one. The dictionary tells us that a sign is a display bearing letters or symbols used to identify a place like this sign telling drivers on Austin Bluffs Parkway that a new charter school had moved into Pulpit Rock Church. That was 2009, our first year, our first place. Here's the sign with our four kids standing next to it. From right to left, Beatrice, Eva, John Francis, and Juliet. Only Beatrice is wearing a uniform because in 2009, our first year, we only had grades six through nine, and she was in our first sixth grade class. In that first year, we only had 77 students and nine faculty. Here they are from our first yearbook, and only three staff. Here's the staff page from our first yearbook. 11 years later, today, in 2020, we have 98 faculty and 44 staff. The dictionary also tells us that a sign can be an act or gesture used to convey an idea or a desire, like this one, where Beatrice is conveying the idea that Eva is really a rabbit. Or this one, I really want to be called on. Or this, I really, really want to be called on when raising just one hand isn't enough. Signs as gestures, though, can be dangerous, deadly even. One of the most famous examples of this comes in Act One, Scene One of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, where Samson, a servant of Lord Capulet, bites his thumb at Abram, a servant to the rival Lord Montague. The interchange goes like this. I will bite my thumb at him. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. But do you bite your thumb at me, sir? You get the idea. A offensive thumb biting as a sign of disrespect that eventually, inevitably, leads to swordplay, bloodshed, and death. The death of two star-crossed lovers. But not all signs need to be signs of disrespect that lead to swordplay and death. Signs can also be life-giving and eye-opening. In The Miracle Worker, Annie Sullivan, described as a half-blind Yankee schoolgirl, teaches young Helen Keller how to sign. Young Helen, of course, has been blind, deaf, and mute since infancy. Annie spends most of the play trying to teach Helen sign language. Oh, pause. Did you know that sign language was not called sign language until 1847? Previously, it was called hand language. Anyway, back to the play. So, in Act 3, Annie opens the scene with this. Water, water, Helen, this is water, W-A-T-E-R. It has a name, the name stands for the thing. And finally, at the climactic end of the play, after weeks of fighting with her teacher, Helen finally gets it. The signs click. And these simple signs, they stand for letters, and the letters become words, and the world opens. This is why we founded McLaren, because signs and letters and numbers and words and gestures and notes opened the world for us. And it's a world that's worth seeing and hearing and understanding and children grow up. Here's our kids at the sign in 2009. 
And here's our kids again at the same sign eight years later in 2017, we moved into our current building where we are now. Kids grow into adults and graduate. Here's Beatrice, the same girl with both hands in the air at her graduation. And when you graduate and when you step out into the world, we hope you'll make it a better place than you found it. No matter where the road might take you, no matter the awards you might win, remember where you came from. And no matter if you become a mathematician or an architect or the finest musicians, remember you'll always be a Highlander. Happy Founders Day, McLaren.